So today is the day. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have been released, and I'm sure there are a bunch of us playing the games as I speak and are loving it. But I'm sure there are also plenty of people that might be holding out at the moment to see if the games are worth shelling out their hard-earned cash for. Well today, I'm here to let all of you know exactly what you need to know about these games before buying them. This will include everything we know about the games, small to big. This isn't going to be my personal review of the games. Rather, it's just a detailing of what the games are and who should be buying them. So with all that said, let's hop right into things. These Sinnoh remakes were announced alongside Pokemon Legends Arceus on Pokemon Day earlier this year. Both games were met with a decent amount of criticism, but also a decent amount of optimism, more so on the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl side of things. For the first time in franchise history, these main series Pokemon games are not being developed by Game Freak, but instead by Ilka Inc., with assistance from Jinichi Masuda. Now, this right away might be a deal breaker for some of you. Putting how games are developed at Game Freak aside, you can be assured that a game will not be fundamentally broken on launch as the developer has a long history in the industry. However, Ilka isn't really known for independently developing games, and rather is known for developing Pokemon Home and assisting with other studios' games. Games they've assisted on include Yakuza 0, Dragon Quest XI, Nier Automata, one of my personal favorite games, Code Vein, and Near Replicant. While the exact scope of their roles in these games aren't fully known, their website does tell you what they've assisted on, with common duties including assisting with graphics development, promotional video work, and cinematics. So sure, having this be their first real video game production could be a red flag for some of you, but based on trailers, I don't think there's much worry there. However, we'll be getting to that in a little bit. Back on how the games were announced, BDSP were posed as faithful remakes, and features a more chibi-ish, toy-like art style, compared to the fully proportioned style that Sword and Shield had that I think many people were expecting and hoping for. Now, if you were to only look at the initial trailer, you might even think everything looks rough around the edges, with very simplistic models, subpar lighting, and so on. But in our most recent looks at the games, you can see that there is far more detail in just about every aspect of what we initially saw. Better texture work, cleaner models, great lighting, just the works. Now, while this chibi style still might not be your cup of tea, it is hard to deny that serious improvements were made during the last eight months. The games won't be exclusively in this chibi art style though, as battles will have your sword and shield proportions for characters and Pokemon, just with different lighting and shading system. So, in terms of visuals, that's what you're working with. I think while it might not be everyone's favorite in the world, it's certainly serviceable and doesn't fundamentally make the game unplayable. So your own preferences are what's going to have to push you forward or stop you in your tracks now. If this isn't a deal breaker for you, then we can continue onwards to the main portion of this video, with the quality of life improvements, new and returning features, and the main differences from the original games. In terms of quality of life stuff, we've got nearly everything that one would expect from the last few games. First off, we have an important change compared to the original games. Generation 5 added one of the best quality of life changes in all of Pokemon, and that was the Would you like to use another repel prompt? Yeah, really. The previous four generations required you to open up your bag and use another repel every time the previous one ran out. Well, that's no longer the case, so if you'd like to backtrack a bit or just avoid swarms of Pokemon messing with you, you can now use repels at your leisure. Gen 5 also gave us hidden abilities, which will make appearances in these remakes, which is great. Hidden abilities really change the game for some Pokemon. So what else do we have? Ah, of course, Pokemon following you makes a return. A beloved feature of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and one that really makes a Pokemon game feel great. Just getting to run around the region with your favorite Pokemon? What else could you ask for? We've got the return of your Pokemon move type advantages and disadvantages appearing. Basically, once you've hit a super effective or not very effective move on a Pokemon, you'll always see those messages on moves of those typings going forward. Some feel that makes the game too easy, but I think it's pretty useful for those that have issues remembering resistances on how dual typings can affect each other. A very popular addition, first introduced in Let's Go, is of course that beloved Pokemon box from anywhere. Want to make changes to your party, but don't want to travel back to the last Pokemon Center? Well, no worries, as you can simply make the change right out in the wild. 
Another positive change comes in the form of being able to change your character's skin tone. X and Y introduced character customization for the first time in the series, yet ORAS famously didn't allow players to do that, as it seems they really wanted to keep the player characters as Brendan and May. However, that was lame, and it's great we have the more inclusive feature of letting players choose how they look. Oh, and how could I forget the most obvious change? The addition of the fairy typing. I'm not too sure how much this is going to affect the overall Sinnoh experience as we once knew it, but we will all find out soon enough. Now we have a few more controversial changes. For starters, the experience share. Back in Diamond and Pearl, the experience share was a held item that you gave to a specific Pokemon in order to gain experience from the main battler. This was changed in X and Y, however, and was now a key item that gave experience to every Pokemon in the party, with the ability to turn it off. Then Let's Go rolled around and made it a baked-in feature that had no option to be turned off, which stayed present in Sword and Shield, and now once again in Diamond and Pearl. It might be nice to just give all of your Pokemon experience and reduce that grind, but I do see why some feel this makes the game too easy, and is kind of lame to at least not give us the option to turn it off like how we could in Gen 6 and 7. Finally, we've got a half good and half bad thing. So, good news is that HM stayed gone this generation. No longer do you have to have a member of your team dedicated to traversing the region. Yet, for some odd reason, they decided to return TMs back to their single-use state. A major drawback. Now, it has been confirmed that you can get multiples of all your TMs, but it just feels a little silly to just not make them infinite usage like how they've pretty much been since Generation 5. We've still got a fair bit to go over, so I'm going to pick up the pace from here on out. Since we're on the talk of HMs, we have the return of the Poketch, a device with a handful of useful and silly apps you can mess around with. With a brand new hidden moves app being your replacement for HMs, calling upon wild Pokemon to help you get through the region. Super Contests are back with a slightly different rhythm game, but is pretty much the same. Ball capsules make their triumphant return, now with the ability to put more stickers on your balls for added flair. Amity Square makes its return, allowing you to bring your Pokemon out from their Pokeballs and just hang out. I was hoping they would allow you to bring any of your Pokemon, but it does seem that that cuteness requirement is still present. While that might be a bummer, there seems to be a limited camera control within the area, allowing you to take nice photos with all the Pokemon you're hanging with. Poffins are back and basically serve the same purpose as before, so nothing really new to note there. We also have the return of our many different fishing rods, and the ability to use them anywhere. Please don't let this be a one-time thing. Let us fish anywhere we'd like again in the future, please. Here's the biggest of the returning features. Gym badge polishing has returned. Trainers, rejoice. You can confidently show off your achievements once more in Sinnoh. We also have the return of the Sinnoh Underground, this time being dubbed the Grand Underground and Secret Bases. However, we have some big differences with them. The Grand Underground now features little biomes called Pokemon Hideaways. These hideaways feature a variety of different Pokemon, some that you normally would not be able to catch up on the surface. The Pokemon in these hideaways are affected by the statues you find and place in your secret base. Unfortunately, secret bases are no longer for decorative purposes and are instead for placing statues you find while mining. These statues directly affect the Pokemon found in hideaways, increasing the odds of you finding a Pokemon of that type within them. You can place up to 18 of them at a time, and there are even special colored variants of the statues that have different effects compared to their non-shiny counterparts. The last few new things we have here would be the Metronome-style shop, a store located in Veilstone City with a nice assortment of clothing to customize your trainer with. While not as expensive as Sword and Shield, there are still some pretty good things in here. This addition, while welcomed, is a bit bittersweet as it replaces the Game Corner. Unfortunately, since the Game Corner did simulate gambling, it had to be removed in order to keep these games from mature rating in some countries. A bit of officially revealed post-game content we have here is in the form of Ramanas Park. Replacing the Pal Park, this park has a variety of caves located within it. Inside those caves are pedestals that accept slates into them. If you have the appropriate slates, boom! Legendary Pokemon await you for battle and capture. And finally, speaking of legendary Pokemon, you can get yourself a nice Mew and Jirachi pretty early on in the game, so long as you have saved data for Let's Go and Sword and Shield respectively. And with that said, that's pretty much it. 
That's everything you need to know about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl before you make that purchase. Now, if you're asking where's the Platinum content, well, it doesn't appear there's going to be any. The map has already told us the Battle Frontier isn't here, and the Distortion World, while being a nice addition, would require a reworking of the entire story, which they have shown they haven't done. Now, despite all these fun features, that might be enough for you to say, yeah, these games aren't for me. But if you didn't know what to expect from these games before going in, I sure hope you do now. So tell me, what did y'all think of today's video? Did it solidify your decision on whether or not you purchased these games? Or are you already having a blast with them like I am? Be sure to let me know everything down in the comments below. Hey, welcome to my new outro. A big thank you to everyone for watching the video. I want to give a huge thanks to my phenomenal team and for the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I have a brand new TikTok for Mystic Umbreon and I've got a goal to get 10k followers over there. If we can hit that goal, I'm going to pick a random video suggested to me by you guys and do it. So go over there and leave a follow. Also over on Mystic Sage, we've still got two videos going up every weekend. We've got content from My Hero, to Demon Slayer, to Dragon Ball. So come and check it out, and also check out Mystic Sage on TikTok. Finally, I've got an Amazon store where I sell tons of cool stuff. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.